Hey church family, good morning. Pastor Jason here. I love you. We've been praying for you all week long. And I just want to say Friday night was incredible. Thank you for participating in Night to Shine, sponsored by the Tim Tebow Foundation. We thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for coming out to serve. It was truly incredible. We are in week seven, the final week of our series, How to Pray. And we've been doing a deep dive into effective biblical prayer. We have covered a lot over the past few weeks. And last Sunday, we talked about the power of prayer and fasting. Remember, if you have missed any of the messages, I would encourage you, go back, watch online. And we're coming to the end also of our 40 days of prayer, praying together as a church family. And I've just got to say, thank you for praying. During the month of January, last month, 17 people gave their lives to Jesus Christ. God has opened up some incredible doors for us to serve our community, and you gave generously to the mission and vision of Refuge Church. We are starting 2022 strong because we started with prayer first. And please don't stop praying. We can't stop praying. Let's lean into prayer. Let's stay focused on Jesus and together church family, we can truly make a difference. Let's pray together and then let's dig into God's word. Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for all the doors that you have opened for us to serve our community. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the generosity of our people. Thank you for the love that they have shown people in our community. And thank you, God, for people who are focused on your son, Jesus, Father, thank you for helping us to start this year strong. Father, I pray that our people won't stop. I pray that we will lean into prayer. I pray that Jesus would be the number one priority in our lives. And God, I pray that, Father, you would be honored and you would be glorified by all that is done this year. 
Uh, Lord Jesus, as we meet today, uh, whether it's people meeting in person, whether it's in our homes, uh, our workplaces, a hospital bed, wherever people are watching or listening from today, God, I just ask you in the name of Jesus, may they be filled to overflowing with the power of your Holy Spirit. And God, may your presence change our very lives. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd move me out of the way. God, I pray that the words that come from my mouth come directly from you. In Jesus, it is in your name we pray. Amen. If you'll remember from a few weeks ago, we briefly talked about a promise that God gives us in Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah 33, 3. And I'm going to be reading out of the God's Word translation. It says, Call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you wonderful and marvelous things that you know nothing about. And we said this promise is that God answers every single prayer. If we call out to God, He will answer you. Now, He doesn't always answer the way we want Him to answer. And His answer isn't always a resounding yes, but God always gives us an answer. We have to remember that no is an answer. Not now is an answer. Grow up is an answer. Later is an answer. God never leaves a prayer unanswered. And there are many examples in the scriptures where God said no to people. Uh, people that we would consider to be spiritual giants, great men and women of faith. Abraham, there were times that God said no. Moses, no. Elijah, no. So if we are going to fully understand prayer, we have to understand that throughout our lifetime, there will be many times where God says no. Let's be real, friends. Our walk with God and prayer can be confusing. Why do some people get healed from sickness and others don't? Why do some people experience miracles and others don't? This is difficult stuff. This is real, right? Now, there are some mysteries about prayer. We know that. But there are some also some logical things, some obvious things. For instance, when two people are praying for the opposite thing, obviously God can't answer both. If a child is praying for it to snow so they don't have to go to school, and the parent's praying it doesn't snow so that they can go to work, God is going to say no to one of them. Or Think about fall in the South. All over the SEC at football games, people are praying for opposing teams. If God answered the prayer, half would be disappointed. And if He did, only 50% would get it. Then there are some prayers that we pray, and if God was to answer them, He would have to take away the free will and the free choice of other people. If someone came up to you and said, I'm praying that God makes you marry me, well, first of all, that's creepy, so let me just say that right now. That's a red flag. Come talk to me about that. But second of all, God's not going to take away your free will. He's not going to force you to marry somebody. And then there's another reason. Think about this. Why is it that when we pray for the sick, not everyone gets well? Why do some people pass away? If you pray for everyone and they never died, and anyone with great faith never died, that would be uh, different, wouldn't it? We're meant to live forever, but not in this broken world. Then, there are times when God says no, and frankly, it's just unexplainable. There are times when you pray a legitimate request, you don't see anything wrong with it, and it just doesn't happen. It doesn't make any sense. And that's when it's unbearable. That's when it can become heartbreaking. And what I have found is that in our lives, these become crisis of faith moments. It's a matter of trust. And so what I want us to do today is I want us to look at some of the reasons. These are not all of the reasons. This is not a comprehensive list. But let's look at some of the reasons that God says no. And then what I want us to do is just briefly take a moment and understand how do we respond? What do we do when we're on the receiving end of the no? Now, before I share these possible explanations, hear my heart, I want to say this. These are meant to comfort you and help you understand 
why God says no. I would never use these with someone who is in pain. If someone just lost a loved one, if someone just experienced trauma or a tragedy, I wouldn't run up to them and say, well, maybe God was doing this and maybe I wouldn't do that. No. Uh, What I would do in those situations that I would operate in a ministry of presence. I would be there for people, love people, care for people, not try to give them an explanation because we don't know for sure why God does everything that he does, especially in specific situations. And you don't know why God said no to them. And so we've got to be very careful with this. But if you're taking notes, here are three reasons that God might say no. First, God sees what we can't see. God sees what we can't see. Listen to Hebrews 4.13. He, talking about God, knows about everyone everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from Him. So we have to understand that God sees the whole picture and we don't. We have a limited perspective of our life, but God can see a wider view. God can see the future and we can't. God always sees things that we cannot see. And God can also see the consequences and he can see the implications of every decision that we make. The fact is, when I ask God for something, I can't imagine all of the implications. I cannot imagine all of the consequences, all of the results. I don't know the good or the bad that it's going to bring. I don't know what all is going to be set into motion. Every prayer has consequences and God can see ahead. I want you to think about this for a moment. I love the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was a church planter next to Jesus, probably the greatest Christian that we know about, right? And Paul was going to Rome and Paul was evangelizing. And I want us to imagine for a moment Paul probably prayed to go to Rome as an evangelist. He he probably prayed to be able to preach to coliseums full of people and and see thousands come to Christ. But Paul didn't get to go as an evangelist. He got to go as a prisoner. He was in chains. And while he was in prison, instead of out preaching, he wrote letters to churches that are now the majority of the New Testament. (laughs) And we get to benefit from that. We get to benefit from the inspired words of the Holy Spirit that speak into our hearts and lives that Paul wrote. God sees what we can't see. Another reason God may say no is that God's plan is just better. His plan is better. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. You probably know this verse. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God doesn't always want us to take the easiest path. God does not always give us the easiest answer. But what God does do is He chooses the best way the best way that will keep us growing, the best way that will make us more and more like His Son, Jesus Christ. You heard me say this a few weeks ago, but God is more interested in your character than your comfort, and His plan for your life is better than your plan for your life could ever be. I'll never forget when we were starting our church. We struggled. We did not know where we were going to meet in person at our local church. And for months we prayed, for months we asked questions, for months we went from place to place. We went to schools and we went to movie theaters. And we really thought there was a school right in the area where we wanted to be. And we really thought this is the place. We met with the principals, they were excited. And when it went to the school board, the school board said, no, we're not interested in having churches in our schools. And so, We were disappointed, but we continued to pray and we continued to pray because we really felt like God wanted us in a school. We felt like that would be the best way for us to reach the community. And I remember going back to that same school system after praying and fasting and doing all that and saying, would you reconsider? And they said, absolutely, we will reconsider your request. And 
that we went back again and said, please, would you allow us to meet in one of your schools? We're going to uh, donate money and we're going to serve the, the community out of it. And we're going to serve the teachers and the students here. And they came back and said no again. And, and we were just weeks away from launching our new church and we were disappointed and we were scared. And we had no idea, is this even going to work? We don't even have a place to meet. And I'll never forget, I was driving just a few miles down the road from the school that we wanted to be in. And I came across another school that I'd never seen before. I didn't even know it was there. And it just so happened that it was in another school system. And so I pulled in and asked the secretary, what, what do I need to do? They said, call central office. And so I called their central office. I put in the paperwork and I had to go meet with the principal of that school. And I was so nervous. I, I dressed up in a suit, if you can believe it. And I had my presentation ready. And I went in and I sat down and I started giving my presentation to the principal. And he said, hold up a minute. Uh, just give me that paper. I want you here. Let me sign that. He said, the school system I came from in North Carolina allowed churches and schools. And it was the greatest help to our teachers and our students to have people there that would support us and help us. I want you here. And it was amazing. In that moment, I realized God's plan is bigger. And I wanted to be in that other school so bad. And I was trying to push my way in. And God had a person and God had a school ready and said, come on in, we want you to be here. And we partnered with that school for five years and we got to make a huge impact on them, but they made a pretty incredible impact on us as well. We have to remember that God's plan is better. And number three, God wants you to fulfill your purpose. Psalm 52, 57, two says, I cry out, to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purpose in me. God has a purpose for your life. He has never made anything without a purpose. And God is not going to allow you to interfere with your purpose through your prayers. Now, if you're praying something that is not according to his purpose for your life, God's not going to give it to you. Now, not everything that happens in your life is going to be good. Bad stuff happens. We're going to make bad choices. We may deviate from God's plan for our life by the choices, the decisions that we make. Maybe things that people try to do to us or the enemy tries to do to us. But even those things, God says, I can use that. Even the bad things that happen to you, even the bad choices that you make, God said, I can use that and I can fit those into your purpose. But we have to understand God's purpose for us is good. He doesn't want to mean us harm. He wants to use us in a powerful way to bring his kingdom to this earth, to be his hands and feet, to be his ambassadors, to be a light in a dark place. And he's not going to answer a prayer that's going to get in the way of his purpose for your life. So real quick, we've looked at the reasons why God may say no, but let's look at what do I do when God says no? It's important. How we respond is important. I think about so many times when my children were growing up and I told them no. <laughs> Maybe they responded by crying. Maybe they responded by a temper tantrum. We've seen that. We can see a lot about someone's maturity when we tell them no. And it's the same thing in our relationship with God. We can understand a lot about our spiritual maturity by how we respond when God says no to us. So real briefly, there are two things that I want you to see here. When God says no, I need to trust him completely. Trust him completely. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. I've got to trust that even when I don't understand, even when I don't like how God answered my prayer, I've got to trust that everything God does for me, he does out of goodness and he does out of love. God does not ever do anything that is unloving. And friends, number two, we have to expect God's grace. 2 Corinthians 12, this is Paul writing, Three different times, I begged the Lord to take it away. He's talking about a, a thorn in his side, a pain. 
something that he's dealing with. Three different times, I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time, God said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of God can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong, Paul writes. When God tells me no, I need to expect that God is going to give His grace. That is His strength. That is His power to handle the answer. What is grace? Grace is God's power to handle the pain. And there are going to be times in your life that God's not going to take the pain away. No, He's going to give you the grace to make it through. Church family, I love you. I pray for you every single day. And I need you to understand, if you're going to be everything God has called and created you to be, if you're going to live the abundant life, you have to understand this. There will be some things that you will never understand until eternity. There are some problems that you face that will never be resolved until you get to eternity. Hear my heart here. There's going to be some times that God is going to take your pain and He's going to use it to bless other people. He's going to take that pain and He's going to turn it into a purpose. He's going to take that pain. He's going to use it to make a difference in people's lives. The mess will become ministry. The test, the trouble will become a testimony. And that's hard when you're walking through that. And that doesn't give a lot of comfort when you're in the middle of the pain. But it is not useless. It is not worthless. It is not for naught. God can use it. We call it redemptive suffering. When God redeems the suffering and uses it to make a difference in people's lives. And listen, He did the same thing with His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is known as the suffering servant. When our relationship with God was broken, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life. And then, friends, Jesus suffered. He suffered. He was tortured. He was insulted. He was placed on a criminal's cross to die. He spilt His blood so that you and I could be forgiven and set free so that our relationship with God could be redeemed so that it could be restored. Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose again from the grave and he is still alive today. And I believe that there are some of you watching and listening and he may be calling you to himself right now because he loves you. And the Bible is clear. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be rescued from hell. You will be rescued from your sin. You will have a brand new life. You'll get an abundant life because you get to live with Jesus as the priority at the forefront. But it's a decision that only you can make. And I want to give you that opportunity right now. Maybe you're watching or listening. You say, Jason, that's me. I need to place my faith in Jesus. I invite you to pray this prayer with me right now. God, I've been going my own direction with my life. I've been making my own decisions. Frankly, God, I've left you out. And today I realize I'm a sinner separated from you. God, I need to be saved. And I believe that my Savior is your son, Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on a cross and I believe he rose again from the grave because of his great love for me. God, I ask you to forgive me and change me. I ask for my brand new life today. Jesus, you are my Lord, and I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. And Jesus, it's in your name I pray. Amen. Now, if that is you, congratulations. It's the greatest decision you could ever make with your life. But I want to ask you, please do not change the channel. Please do not turn this video off without letting me know. You can go to our website right now. Click on the tab that says, I'm new. Give us a name, an email address, a phone number, 
And let us know about the decision that you made. And I want to reach out to you. I want to pray for you by name. I want to send you resources that will help you grow in your faith. I want you to be everything God has called and created you to be. But it starts by letting us know today. We love you. We are for you. If you have things going on in your life and you say, Jason, I just need you to pray for me. Let us know. Go fill out that online prayer form. Not only am I standing by, but our prayer team is standing by just to lift your name up to Jesus. And if you don't have a church home, you can let us know that too. If you're local, we would love for you to be a part of our local church family. But no matter where you're at in the world, let us know and we will do the best that we can to help you find a Jesus-worshiping, Bible-believing, people-loving, community-serving, life-giving church where you can plug in and grow and be everything God's created you to be. I love you. And as we close today, I want to pray for you, asking God just to move powerfully in your life today. Jesus, we love you so much. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. And Father, I pray for these people, every person that are watching and listening. God, I don't know what's going on in everybody's lives, but I know that you do. And Father, I ask in these moments that God, they could experience your compassion and your care and your love. Your word says that we can cast all of our anxieties on you because you care about us. So Father, in these moments, I pray that people all over this community and all over this country and all over this world would just let go of their anxieties. God, they would throw them to you right now. Father, in trust. And God, as we pray, I know, God, there are people right now, they're praying to you, they're lifting up their requests. Father, I know you're not going to say yes to every single one, but God, I know you're going to answer. And Father, no matter what your answer is, I pray that you would give people the faith, the divine faith to trust you and to expect the grace to make it through every situation and circumstance. Jesus, thank you for your power and your presence in our lives. Jesus, we're going to give you the honor and glory for what you do. And Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen.